Welcome to Sharing Your Vision. This program is a very different kind of program because we have a very special guest with us, Nichelle Hastings. She's a minister, she's a mom, she's a grandmother, and she's an advocate. Welcome, Nichelle. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm really excited. It's really a different kind of program because we're going to be sharing important information about something that happens in a lot of the households, whether you're Christian or a non-Christian. Tell me about your mission. Well, my mission is almost exactly what you said to the letter to raise awareness on a situation that many of us are dealing with in silence. And that is that domestic abuse and spousal abuse is happening and it's prevalent inside the body of Christ equally, if not more so than it is in the secular world. So we want to not just raise awareness, but then help guide those that are in this situation to safe places and resources that will allow them to talk about it, to admit and open up to it, and then to seek what the scripture says to be free from it. We wanna take this opportunity and show a video. Let, let us know what contains, what is in the video, and what is the video about pertaining the subject that we've just presented. So, first of all, it took a long time to make the video, right? Um, this video is for A, the professional woman, B, the Christian woman, C, the woman that is in denial. This video um, is my intimate sharing of what happens to the woman that's being abused in silence. What biblical verse did you find in, in the Holy Bible that led to, to this day where you are an advocate of this terrible tragedy that happens? Wow, well, it's like reading it for the first time. I read in Romans 8 and 18 where it says that I reckon that the sufferings of our present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. The sufferings of this present time, the abuse, the misunderstanding, the um, poverty, all those things are not worthy to be compared with the newness with that glory that shall be revealed in us after we have suffered through. That's the scripture, Romans 8 and 18. Michelle, is there a testimony that you'd like to share that made you today the woman that you are in Christ? So, My grandfather, who he, I was like the grandson that he didn't have, right? Because I was the oldest, the oldest grand, the oldest niece, the oldest everything, right? In this generation. <laughs> and my grandfather and I was very close. When my grandfather passed away, I visited the mortuary and I had to write a letter to apologize to him because he always told me I was gonna be as tall as the Empire State Building. Like I was gonna just be this magnificent woman. And when I left New York, cause I'm from New York originally, like no one could understand. It's like, what are you doing? You're picking up and you're leaving. You're going to a place that nobody knows you and you know no one. But Florida was the first state to have um, no tolerance on domestic battery. So because I couldn't tell anyone, I couldn't utter what was happening to me, I ran away, I escaped what I thought I was running away. But God met me here in a place where I knew no one. It was like being in the belly of that well, of that big fish. Domestic violence had swallowed me up. But God had me to be 
spit back on that ground to say, I'm going to make you again. I'm going to remake you like clay. I'm going to put you on this wheel. And where you know no one, I'm going to bring you into that safe place where you get to know me for yourself. The he that abides under the shadow of the Almighty. So this is what happened to me when I thought I was running away. I really met God in the midst of it. Wow, tremendous. That is very deep and is very powerful. I can feel mm -hmm. your expression. Mm -hmm. The, the things that you came out from mm -hmm. and where God has you today. Yes. What did that mission cost you? Well, when we just talked about it, I left all of my friends. I didn't leave a forwarding address. I didn't leave a forwarding phone number. I didn't leave anything. I asked my grandmother to not give anyone my information. Just let me be. I had to figure out if I was going to become this rock of Gibraltar, if I was going to be reestablished, like if I was going to allow the Lord to establish my ways. And, you know, David said that my feet had almost slipped. And then I went into the house of the Lord. So if I was going to allow that experience of going back, back into the house of the Lord to have manifestation in my life. I had to release everything and everyone because everyone has chatter. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has something that they want to say. Everyone has questions. Mm -hmm. Do you know that some questions we can't answer immediately? We have to wait on that deliverance. So it cost me a lot in the beginning, but you know, it says in the scriptures that there is nothing that we have lost for the kingdom, for his sake, that he will not again give back unto Amen. us. Yes. So he has poured back into me that new oil, that fresh wine that can't go back into those old bottle skins. So I, I am living in my rejuvenated, reinforced state through Christ. I can say that there has been rewards in your life because of your obedience. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the rewards have been that God has placed me in circles that some people dream about. Wow. Like working with billionaires on platforms having the chance to not just share my testimony, but to go inside the prisons. Let me, let me touch on that. There are many women that are inside prison because they took domestic violence matters into their own hands. One, they were too embarrassed to say anything about it. So when they took matters into their own hands, a lot of times there was no proof. There was no footprint. It was just what she or he did to their abuser. And they suffer twice. So I've been able to go back into federal, local, and state prisons, jails, and talk to these women. And to help them understand, you're punished because of the consequence that led from the decision. I know that sounds backwards, mm -hmm. right? But the consequence from the decision led them to an action that caused them to A, be behind bars, right? That shame. So now we get a chance to talk back to their daughters and to tell them to open their mouths. You have to say something. Women and men that are being abused, you have to say something. They have this thing out. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. If you are being abused, say something. If you keep your mouth quiet and you take matters into your own hands, then the law will take matters into their own hands. I know it seems like a double jeopardy, but we have got to educate people that are going through this. I totally agree with you. And this video is so powerful. Take me through the video. I know that the audience um, will have the opportunity to view it. But there's some people that are listening through the radio. Mm -hmm. They might not be able to have that opportunity. But let's give him or her the opportunity to hear what's happening in that video. So, um, I talk about in my video that when you're inside church and a lot of churches, the body of Christ, 
still unable to deal with the fact that people are being beaten in their congregation. I mean, if you want to just get to the raw of it, we're being beaten, we're being abused, we're being mentally um, torn apart, we're being torn down. And when you go and you ask the pastor or leader, can we talk about this? They're not ready because it's a heavy, it's a heavy topic. So they tell you to, you know, just kind of be quiet, wear shades, you know, come to church, sit in the back, you know, all those things to try to pacify it until someone ends up dead. And then it's out in the audience and nobody is like, I didn't even see that coming. But a lot of times the leaders have seen it coming. So I would say that this video is a way, it's called Speaking Up to Help Others. And it's subtitled, A Minister's Story of Domestic Violence. I myself was a licensed minister when this was happening to me. And I married a minister who was in title only, but apparently he had not received the salvation and the love of Jesus Christ because for five years he beat me. Anytime he got angry, anytime he didn't understand, anytime I, I smiled too much, no matter what I did, it was not good enough. No matter what I said, it wasn't sufficient. No matter how I tried, it was just, I felt short. And then one day I realized, like you will realize, it's not you, it's in that person. Because if you say to me, I need you to change A, B, and C, and then I'll stop. And then you change A, B, and C, and then now it's, I need you to change D, E, and F. It's never enough mm -hmm. until it, it is exposed. And that's really what I wanna do in my video. I wanna raise awareness in the privacy of your own home. You can listen to this in the car. You can watch it from the, wherever. Put your earbuds in, in Starbucks, but it is spoken in my video to get you to that safe place. I think that's wonderful. And yes, the video is not only visual, but it's also audio. Yes, ma'am. But it's good to take out the source of the information and share it yourself with the audience so they can connect those that need connection because like you said there's a lot of people suffering uh, men and women but mostly women suffer uh, this situation in their homes with their husbands the the man that said that they would love them <laughs> cherish them till death do us part and they become their enemy Yes, death might do us part by his hand. Yes. You ever think about that? Yes. Until death do us part. If you look at the data, most of the men that can't have their way with these women or when women make the excuse, sweetheart, <laughs> you don't need to tell him that you're leaving. Just go. If you look at the data, if you look at the news story, every woman that made this grand announcement, I don't know like mm -hmm. what we think we're gonna get from that, they have never made it out alive. Yes. Either he or she has gone to their workplace and they don't care who they have to take out to get to you. Yes. They're gonna get to you. Mm -hmm. Because nothing satisfies them unless you're miserable. And in some cases, that has ended in death. So many times. It's very sad. Yes. It's terribly sad. Mm -hmm. Now tell us some of the symptoms that women um, actually endure uh, because you know it always has a start it has some kind of beginning where you start to notice that your spouse is changing uh, either he gets angry for anything or he just doesn't agree with you with anything what are some of the things that women while they're dating uh -huh. even can actually notice and take into account before deciding to marry that person? Mm -hmm. Well, one is they want you all to themselves. So even if they have to over compliment you, overtake you to dinner, over, over, over compensate for everything, they become overbearing. So they could eat up all of your time and all of your attention. And once you continuously give that to them and feed into that, that then, on the other hand, the switch part of that is isolation. You think isolation is locking you up in a box and not, you know, throwing away the key. No, you isolate them by being overbearing. 
So let's say you and I, we have a date to go get shoes like every other Friday. Now he is making sure that every other Friday he's overcompensating you with something or even guilting you. Well, why do you have to go with her all the time? Why can't you go with me? Let me see the shoes. It starts in very subtle ways, but it begins. The tone changes, the aggression changes, the compliments will cease. Now it becomes, oh, but you could change that. Oh, that's, you, you, it's so subtle and it takes a finite ear to understand that something is changing. Usually your friends notice first. <laughs> your mom notices first. Your daughter notices. Like something's not right or he's weirding out. And you're like, oh, no, that's just him. Mm -mm, not just him. <laughs> that's the beginning of... Of, of something that could be deadly. Michelle, why is this relevant to the body of Christ? Good question. The relevancy of this topic is paramount to what's happening in secret. We have pastors who, when they take off their robe or their clergy collar, when they get home, they have so much aggression from the heat of the day. Like, can you imagine someone preaching the gospel and coming home full of aggression, full of anger, full of frustration. Maybe the uh, offering wasn't what it needed to be to cover the bills or uh, that deacon that he needed to be in place wasn't in place. Like any little thing, we are finding out more and more that first ladies, pastors, wives, other leaders are, are speaking out, not so much on a platform, but they're telling their friends in secret, He's beating me. He's hurting me. He's mean to me. He's nicer to the congregation than he is to me. Or he's not paying our bills at home. Do you know that that is a form of abuse? When a woman can't be comforted in her own home, when she doesn't know where her next meal is coming from? And I get it that there's bills that need to be paid for the church. This is not what we're talking about because God does provide. We are talking about people that are outright taking their funds and feeling like they could do what they want to do with it. And because you have a title and you are supposed to be my help me, you need to be quiet. That's not fair. No. And God's going to judge that. God's going to judge that. But before he does, he sends us. He said in his word, oh, Jerusalem, how many prophets, how many times must I send someone to speak unto you, speaking up to help others? We are here today. You wanted us on this platform. We are that voice. We are that voice crying in the wilderness. What must I do to be saved? How must I change? What shall a man change his ways. This is that warning before destruction. Pride comes before a fall. So sometimes our leaders are so prideful they think we could preach the word, but shall I myself, like Paul say, become a castaway? God forbid. Mm -hmm. This is why it's relevant. God forbid that these things happen to you. God forbid that we suffer in silence any longer. We don't have to be on the all these different movements and have all these different marches. We just need to change our ways. Sometimes we need to take a sabbatical, step back, let someone else. Because as it is on the head, so it flows down to the body. We need to care about our sheep enough to just say I need a few months off or a few weeks off and go and seek counsel. There is a lot out there. There's a lot of help. So you're not alone if you're in that situation. Mm -hmm. There's always someone that God provides to help. Yes. And to seek guidance and yes. some direction. Yes. And also to make sure that your fears don't overwhelm you, overcome. Mm -hmm. Because then if that takes place, what happens? They stay. You stay in those situations. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't want that. He doesn't. No. And Michelle, you are a living testimony of yes. God's glory. Yes. Look at your smile. Yes. She has a wonderful <laughs> personality. She brightens any room or any person. <laughs> you know, 
I was interviewed on a, another broadcast some time ago. And I'm not sure, you know, when they called me up, they wanted to know the story. They talked about, you know, how happy I was. And, but when they got there, when I got there, they were really shocked that I didn't have bitterness and, and, and gloom and doom. Like, they're like, what gives? And I told him, the blood has transformed me. When he says, cast your cares, I cast my agony to him. I cast my Amen. pain to him. Amen. I cast my bitterness to him. I literally went to the beach every time I could. I took him literal at his word. I was casting it like a fishnet. I was like, I need you to take this sorrow because I can't live like this. I can't, you didn't create me to be that. You created me to be a praise. You said that you would turn my mourning into dancing again. You will lift my sorrows. So if you're out there, you're going through this, I want you to know that you can live again. You can begin again because greater is he that is on the inside of us than he that is in the world. The world of what? The world of pain, the world of shame, the world of doubt, the world of not enough. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in all the world he he says i sent my word to heal your disease i had a disease i was ashamed i left home i left everything else behind and i ran but all in the secret place of the most high god under the shadows he said the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and we are safe. I ran into safety. I thought I was escaping, but I ran into the arms of the master and I cast my cares upon him. And he has made me glad. Oh, yes, he has. Amen. He'll make you glad as well. Amen. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father. I'm so happy to have you here and to share this testimony of truth and life yes. and yes. triumph. And you smile because God has healed you. Yes. And it's real. It's, it's so real that He has a plan for us. I, I want to address this if I can. Yes. Because a lot of us hear the voice of the Lord when He says, this is going to be your mate. Right. This is what I struggled with because we weren't raised for divorce. We weren't raised to leave our home. We weren't raised to do those things. But he gave me a peace in that if the non-believer departs, you have to be at peace. When I tried to explain to my grandmother, because it was my first husband who wanted the divorce, he wanted to take, when I tell you, he wanted to not just take my life. He wanted to take everything. And then when there was nothing else left to take, he came after my belief. And he started the divorce proceedings. And then he stopped. And then he started. And then he stopped. And one day the judge just said, enough of this. And he made the divorce final. He walked away. If someone walks away with you, because my grandmother was like, tell the judge you don't believe in that. You have to obey the laws of the land. Yes. If the non-believer departs, you've got to seek the Lord for the peace of your sanctity and of your sanity. Yes. So when he couldn't play on me naturally, he started playing with me spiritually. And when you began to deal with a child of God after the spirit, then the Holy Spirit has to take over. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a peace that surpasses all understanding, that began to guard my heart and my mind through Christ Jesus. So all of my thoughts of suicide, of, of, of shame, all those thoughts, they were overtaken with the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I am the beautification of the Lord. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Many of the feet, the, how beautiful are the feet of those that preach the gospel. So my testimony became like the woman at the well. Come see a man who is healing me. Man. Who yes. is making me over. So yes, that testimony that I have new life. I'm born again. Amen. Hey, I'm born again. <laughs> I love In it. In so many ways, I'm I born again. It. Yes, I am. 
there's so many women out there that you are inspiring uh, with this testimony of life and triumph. Yeah. And that's what we need to glorify God because today you smile yes. and you understand women that are hurting and situations that rise in the household yes. that can be healed. Yes. They don't have to sustain. They can be totally destroyed by the blood of Christ mm. and both can be healed mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. woman and the man as yes. well exactly it's not hopeless for the man no it is not it is not no it is not it wasn't hopeless for Paul exactly it was a, he, exactly. Paul became one of the greatest evangelist speakers writers of the Bible because God changed him amen God changed him he recognized who art thou yes. God changed him he wants to give us beauty for our ashes he wants to give us oil, healing balm. He, it's in his hands. Amen. There is a balm in Gilead. Yes, there is. For the victor and those that are causing oppression. Amen. Yeah, there is. Now, I would like for you to share a message of faith. You know, we've been talking about it through the program. Mm -hmm. But something in your heart that you want to share as a message. One I would like to tell women, not just beginning again, going through therapy or um, counseling, but you can be beautifully married. My husband today, oh my gosh. First of all, let me just tell you, I didn't even want to be married again. I didn't want any, I didn't want, I didn't want to do, my grandma was like, what is wrong? Yes, and I don't want any parts of this. <laughs> because if someone could take a vow, to love you and then take a vow to end your life. That's that it's not spoken, but basically that's just like I'm gonna make a pact to make you miserable. Like you it's hard to fathom mm -hmm. that someone can do that. It's baffling. It's, it, I didn't I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. But can I tell you, God's wisdom, all the way from another country, my husband's Canadian, he became my neighbor. And he was so astute, so loving, so kind, so always asking me questions. How can I help? How can I do these things? And one day he was like, you know, my father continues to tell me that two are better than one. And we have such a trust for one another. We make a great team. And he said this for like weeks. And I was like, okay, this is, we're <laughs> great neighbors. And can I tell you when my goddaughter says, God, mom, that man is not talking about just becoming a great team. He wants you to become his wife. God allowed me to trust him as my neighbor first and as my friend. And today we are going to be celebrating in the next year, 15 years Ooh, of marriage. Yes. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so happy for you. Yes. And he's a great provider. He loves my son. Together we have three children, grandchildren, godchildren, and listen, God can, God wants to, and God will if you allow him. He will make your life completely brand new. For this <laughs> is the victory that overcomes the world even our faith. Michelle, is there anything that you would like to achieve that you haven't achieved yet? Well, we're going to pray on that because my husband's quite shy when it comes to platforms, but I would love to do a ministry, marital, council platform talk with him there, like even a TED talk. Like I'd love to do that um, because my life is really funny, humorous, right? <laughs> um, but together, he and I, um, we've been in the, in the trenches. We've been through a lot together. Um, the one thing that I say when I speak on platforms, I ask everyone to give my husband a standard ovation because it takes a great man to clean up the last man's residue. Wow. And that would be the title of the, of the conference. It takes a great man, wow. male or female, to clean up the last man's or woman's residue. 
Wow, that's powerful. Yes. I love that. Yes. Today you have a happy home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you're an advocate. Yes. Helping yes. other women yes. seek truth in Christ. Yes. And Absolutely. healing through Him as well. Absolutely. How does that feel? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> um, one is 24-7. Uh, I try to avail myself um, all the time. So it's, um, I feel gratitude to the Lord. I feel that I am going to do this the rest of my life. I do it every single day. People ask, how do you get, I don't get burnt out because I am doing what I love. I am out there as a sign. You know, when I was small and I would receive those prophetic words, I didn't quite understand what that meant, but I get it now. It says I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I am that. I am that. I am the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Being read of men and women, a living epistle, a lively stone. I am a lively stone. <laughs> and I, I've been running for Jesus, as the old folks would say, a long time. And I'm not tired yet. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and we will not be tired no, until not. God has us in his presence. Then we got more work we to do. We have more work to do. <laughs> He's probably laughing upstairs and yes. saying, wait until you get here. Yes. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> we want more time. Oh, more time to spread the word of Amen. Christ. Amen. And to share the goodness and the love of God. Absolutely. And you've done that. Thank you. In this program, in Thank this you. space. Thank you. Sharing your vision. Amen. The Amen. vision that God has bestowed upon you. Amen. Your talents. You're so beautiful. <laughs> she has a beautiful personality. She's just amazing. She's just a wonderful oh soul. Gosh, thank a you. wonderful woman thank of you. God. Thank you. And I'm so happy and proud that you're here thank to you. honor our Father. Amen. Amen. I'm going to just ask you as you guys um, close out to just put up my uh, name. I am Googleable. Yes. <laughs> when you work so hard, <laughs> Google will find you. <laughs> Yes. Um, but we do have a Facebook, uh, Mentor to Marriage, that is M-E-N-T-O-R, the number two, M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E, Mentor to Marriage. I'm from Brooklyn, so sometimes that <laughs> accent comes out. But you can find me if you just seriously put in Nichelle Hastings. Google will find me on your behalf, I promise. <laughs> Nichelle, is there anything in your heart that you'd like to share that I haven't asked you? I want to just say thank you for being brave enough. I want to say thank you for being brave enough to even address this topic. That's, ah. Thank you. Ashe, as they say. Amen. <laughs> welcome back. Don't, don't, don't just uh, come uh, in during this programming, but welcome. Welcome Thank back you. to you. continue um, you. supporting you, you in your advocacy. Thank you. Thank you. So we can help everyone in Thank need. Thank you. Thank and you. that's what we're here Thank for. Yes, we are as hand and feet. Amen. Thank you so much. Yes, this Perfect. is your home now. Amen. Okay? Take my shoes off the next time. Of course. We'll have coffee. Amen. Shalom. <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for being there. Thank you for listening in. And we hope that this time and this program may have been a blessing to your life.